Hey everyone, back again with another Sunday School lesson. Today is Palm Sunday. It's a week until the best day of the year, Easter Sunday when He is risen. Let's get into today's lesson, but before we do, if you haven't taken four minutes, I suggest you do that now to uh, pause this video, take four minutes to watch the clip of the YouTube video that I put in the email that went out to you this week. Pause the video, do that, and come back to me. All right, not sure if you paused and came back or you're still with me. Let's get into today's lesson. This is Palm Sunday. Question for you at home. Have you ever felt like there's a real strong opposition around you? Um, I did recently. I went to a 76ers game, Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo Center, downtown Philly, with a friend of mine from GVF. And uh, the place was packed. It was the 76ers versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, I'm from Cleveland, so I went there representing I had a Cleveland Cavaliers sweatshirt on, and I was ready to see my team, who is terrible this year, uh, battle the mighty 76ers in their home stadium. And the friend that I was with uh, had his 76ers gear on, the hat, the shirt, the everything ready to go 76ers, and we sat in the middle of 76ers fans. And I'm telling you, when the Cavs did something good, and I'm like, yeah, I'm standing up, I got death stares. I got people literally turning around in their seats to give me the old, like, those ones. And, you know, my friend was just like, hey, you know, maybe when they do good, you can just sort of whisper. And I couldn't hold it back because they were doing really good against the 76ers. Now, 76ers won, so they got their way, but I definitely felt like I was in enemy territory. Now, that story does have a purpose. Um, this actually would have been a lot like the scene when Jesus was entering Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He had a whole group of people who were cheering for him, happy to see him, glad to see Jesus finally coming into Jerusalem. This is sometimes called the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But at the same time, there were evil Pharisees, Sadducees, Roman rulers shooting him death stares. Why? Because someone new was coming to town that was big, famous, popular. He had the hearts and minds of a big group of people and they thought maybe going to over, overthrow the government of the day. So this is when murder welled up in their hearts and they started to plot to kill Jesus. So there's a strong opposition between celebration and murderous thoughts. And that's where we are today in our story uh, about Palm Sunday. So we're going to read a section of scripture. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted you to take a pause as we'd like to do here. Uh, pause, ask your family and your kids, uh, have you ever felt like that? where there's been a big divide between maybe you or someone around you and the feeling that they're having versus you. Take a pause, talk about it as a family. Have you ever felt that conflict, that tension? Well, uh, not sure if you paused or if you're back or still with us, but um, parents, this might be a time when you're watching your kids play soccer and your kid scores a goal and you stand up and you're like, yes! And you look to your right and there's the parent of the goalie. And he's just like, no. Uh, <clears throat> kids, this might be similar to when you found out that school was canceled for the foreseeable future. Bingo! And you look to your parents, and they're like, yay! There's a conflict and a tension. So here we go. We're going to read Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you at once, and you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. So this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle and riding a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, while the others cut branches from trees to spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna the highest in heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? Who is this? 
the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. In other references, we have Luke 19.37 saying, The people joyfully praised God in loud voices for the miracles they had seen. Matthew 21.15-16 says this, The children in the temple praised Him, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Meanwhile, Luke 19.39, we read about the response of the Pharisees in the midst of all this praise, the Pharisees asking Jesus to rebuke His followers, rebuke the people that are cheering you on, the Pharisees are saying. Tell your followers to stop saying that stuff. The Bible actually says that because of claims like this, when Jesus said, I am the Messiah, and that He wanted people to worship Him as God, the Pharisees couldn't handle it. They were losing it because He was claiming to be God. And this is when they started to plot to have Him killed. Despite the fact, and this is interesting, Jesus was actually fulfilling prophecy that the Pharisees knew about. He was doing what they knew the Messiah would and should do. Yet they had this hatred in their heart when there was a guy there doing it. It was prophesied in Psalm 118, 1 Kings 133, Zechariah 9.9. So, another question for you at home to work through. As we approach our Palm Sunday, and in the midst of COVID-19 and school cancellations and stock market fluctuations, where do you think our world is with regard to worshiping our King, Jesus, and the only God in the universe? Where do you think our world is? Talk about that as a family. All right, follow-up question to that first one. Uh, depending on your answer to that one, here's another one. What do you think Jesus wanted his followers to do then as he was entering Jerusalem and it was obvious that there were haters? What do you think Jesus would have wanted his followers, his believers to do then? And in light of that, what do you think Jesus is asking his followers, me, you, to do now in light of a similar tension? I'm going to close with this today. Whatever Jesus requires of you, don't hold it back. Give it to Him. Give Jesus your heart, your soul, your mind. Cast all your cares on Him. Give Him your anxieties. Give Him your occupation. Be preoccupied with Jesus in this time. I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes my days in this self-quarantine time we're all living in, they just sort of slip away. I want to encourage you to put Jesus as at the top on your list of things to do. That's what God wants. That's what should be His. That's where your focus should be, is on Jesus. And guys, as we approach Easter Sunday next week, the best day of the year, Easter Sunday is really the day that makes Christmas special because Jesus comes back. Spoiler alert. Palm Sunday is a bit scary, and the time between is very scary and uncertain, especially if you don't have the Bible like we do. If you were living in those times, you'd be extremely worried about this man Jesus. So we're setting up for Easter Sunday, which is the best day of the year. But it's in less than perfect circumstances. Isn't it interesting how God sends His only Son to this earth, and the things that He goes through are not easy. Not everybody believed Him. It actually says in the in, the, in Luke, which we read today, that people were mocking and ridiculing Jesus as He was on the way to be murdered. It's the worst. And I think sometimes as Christians, we need that reminder that if those things were in God's will for Jesus, it's okay that sometimes God's will for us is uncertain and we don't know what to do. And it's okay if you feel like that right now. Just remember to trust in God and in His will. Then wait and see. God's response. You give Him your heart, your soul, your mind, your thoughts, your days, your money, your social media. Guys, watch what God does when His servants are faithful. Watch what God does when you love Him morning, noon, and night. And I know you got the time. So let's prioritize Jesus. Let's focus on His journey to the cross on this Palm Sunday. Guys, stay safe this week. I'm praying for you. Look forward to seeing you again next week. And remember, don't lick shopping carts. See ya.